Hello, this video is about CSS borders. And you'll notice that I'm using the same document I've been using for margin and for padding, but I've added one extra photo because one of the things that we most commonly use borders on is images. And so I had one image before, you've seen that, and, uh, but I'm using the IMG element selector to uh, apply styles to all the images on the page. And so I'm going to go in and I'm going to use the border shorthand uh, style for this uh, CSS declaration. It's easier, it's shorter, and usually, usually you want the border to be exactly the same on all four sides. So this is the easiest way to do it. Now you want to say how wide is the border going to be? Let's be really simple and say one pixel. That's a very skinny border. And within the border shorthand declaration, you do not have any commas. So when you write different values, you don't put commas between them, you just have spaces. The other thing you absolutely have to specify is the style of the border. So a typical border would be a solid line and you may specify a color, but you don't have to because the border will take on the color of the element that it's inside or it will inherit from its parent. And in this case, my body has a color of a dark gray, almost black, so that should be what we see around the images. And of course you have to end it with a semicolon like any CSS declaration. So we save and we reload and we can see that a very thin dark border has appeared around both of the images. Um, can we make that border thicker? Yes, we can. So say we wanted it to be, um, I don't know, five pixels. Save, reload, right? Getting a little bigger. Say we now think that's too dark. Oh, I don't think that's a pleasant color. Maybe I want it to be more in tune with the background of my body. So I can add a color right here, save and reload. And now instead of that dark, uh, dark gray, now I've got a medium kind of a blue. And I can make it thicker if you want. Great. Now it's also possible to add just one side of a border to an element. So um, if I would like to add, say, a border below my heading at the top of the page, that is an H1. And what I'm going to do is copy this and paste it. Uh, but instead of having it go on all four sides, I'm going to say border bottom. So you've got the option to say border bottom, border left, border top, border right. You can style each of these individually and using that CSS property, you can also use the thickness, the type, and the color. So let's see what that would look like, okay. Um, I might want to put some padding below my heading so that the border is farther away from the heading. Uh, so we can also do padding bottom just on one side. And maybe we want to say 10 pixels. Save, reload. Okay. And another thing is that you might want to use a different style. So solid is very common, but now and then you might want dotted or dashed or one of the other style options as a value for the border property in CSS. So let's reload and see what that looks like. So sometimes that might be fun or cool. Um, you don't really have any control over the dots other than their size. They might look a little different on different uh, browsers and dashed can really look different depending on the browser that you're on. Not always so beautiful. Anyway, okay, I'm gonna put that back to dotted. I think it looked nicer. 
and I'm also going to show you that the border will always be the entire width of the element. So an H1 element is a block level element, and even though the text doesn't go the whole way across the browser window, any border that you put on a block level element will go the whole way across. Any border you put on a block level element such as H1, H2, article, section, aside, nav, that border will go the entire width of the element. And uh, you don't see that on the images. The border on an image will stay right around the image depending on the size of the image. Now the next thing we want to look at is border radius, which is pretty cool. So maybe we don't want square, sharp little borders. Uh, maybe we would rather have them be a little bit curvy. So border hyphen radius is the property. And we can style all four with one measurement. And picking the measurement can be a little tricky. Percent is not so good. Uh, M or rem can be good. Pixels can be good. Um, those are pretty much our, our options. Let me see what 50 pixels would look like. Just pick a crazy big number. Save and reload. All right. Oh, and another thing about the border radius is you don't need any border to do it. So we've got a border on our images, but let's take that border off to prove that border radius does not need a border property. So I will save and I will reload, and there are our images. Now maybe you say, oh, that's pretty extreme, that looks kind of weird. So maybe you just want to make it very, very subtle, very small. Right, so you can have a little bit of a rounded corner on every image on the page, or you could select certain images and give them classes. Um, border radius will also work on any other block level element. So since the article has a background color that sets it off from the body, I'm going to take that same border radius and put it on article, save and reload. And now you'll see that there is a subtle little rounding on the corners of the article. So border radius is a pretty neat thing to know how to do. Don't go crazy with it because that might look a little weird. Um, subtle might be better than too big. So this is the third of three videos in which I have covered margin, padding, and border. Three of these together make up what's known as the box model in CSS. But there's a little more to know, and that is box sizing and how this can affect your layouts in surprising ways. So that will be the next video.